Hey, what's up, everybody? In a uh, Toyota Scion. Shoot, I don't know what year it is. I'll put it in the description. Uh, locks don't work. The uh, This one, I can manually do it, but it does not respond to the buttons. It does not open or close. Now, the problem is the door lock actuator. So basically, it's this guy right here. Um, both of mine in this car were bad for the passenger and the driver. I'm going to show you a couple tricks you could use to know if your door lock actuator is bad. I know because I just replaced mine. So on that side, um, see it's working. Lock, open. Uh, this one is not though. Basically this car, both of these were not working. I, uh, I tore apart the whole dash and on the door to find out what was wrong. And uh, I found out a few tricks you could do. Number one is take your key and hit the lock and unlock button. Um, listen for a click down here. Let's go down here. This uh, this thing has the relay in it, I believe. Now you hit lock. <clears throat> now listen real quick. So that's the relay clicking. Also, if your lights outside uh, go, like your blinkers, then um, then uh, that means your key is communicating. Uh, the relay clicking down there is another uh, thing to check and um, also um, a good check too is if one door works and the other doesn't that's also a, a good indication of the door like actuator being bad uh, you could test power and ground to the actuator I'll take the door apart and I'll show you what wires to check on and um, you could literally see like when you're pressing lock you could see the voltage going to the to the uh, door lock actuator just so you could be sure um, this one had neither door working so it was uh, kind of confusing at first but then I realized that when these fail they don't fail like they just fail silently so they just stop working one day you might not even notice that one of them is bad for a while and then your other one goes bad and um, and then you know you got both that are out these actually fail a lot they are pricey little buggers like 300 bucks each um, you might be able to find a cheaper one somewhere. These are new from Toyota. Uh, like I said, I'm doing both. Um, you just have to go to Toyota, give them your VIN, and then they'll uh, do it. So I'm going to show you guys how to uh, take the door apart and replace this thing and show you how to check the voltage. All right, here we go. So get yourself a plastic pry bar. You're going to need it for this or this, maybe like a flathead with a rag on it. Now basically, we're going to get this silver piece off. Now, Toyota, in their infinite wisdom, and I'm not being sarcastic, they put a little notch here on the bottom, right where my finger is. Start there, put whatever you got to uh, pop that loose, and then right here, you'll you'll undo that from the back where my finger was. So we'll pop this loose right here, and uh, and then you just wiggle it. Wiggling is going to be your friend. Wiggle it and gently pull. Don't get impatient with it. Uh, put that to the side. Get this guy out. Now we got a screw here, a screw here. And a screw here. And get these guys out. Okay. I already unscrewed them. I'm not gonna make you force force you to you know watch me do that. So I got them out. Save these. Put them in the cup holder. That's what I do. Uh, the two long ones were for the handle. Now we gotta get this off. Put your pry bar right here and push up. And then you're gonna pull this out towards the back of the car. Basically, there's a tab in the front, and we don't want to break that tab. So pull it up like this. Now pull it backwards. Here's the tab in the front. If you try to just pull it straight up, it'll break that tab, and then it'll sit in there loosely. All right, <clears throat> now we could unplug this. There's a button on here. Um, shoot, not this side, the other side. Uh, you gotta push the button. What you do is you push that button, and then you pull the uh, top of the connector out. This connector, you kinda have to wrestle with it. Just don't get you know too impatient with it and break it, but undo that. All right, so now we got that. Now you could come under here and find it. There's a spot down here that has some meat. You could grab it and pull the door. You're just straight up going to wiggle and pull the door panel off. All right. Make sure all your screws are out. Oh, let's pull this thing off first. Uh, this just pulls off. Just wiggle it and pull it off. Or you could get your plastic pry bar and pop it off. See, make sure you don't lose those two little white clips. All right, so now I'm going to just pull this off. Uh, I'm gonna have to use two hands because if I do it, I'm not gonna be able to do it in the camera in my hand So anyways, I pulled it off this handle and lock will kind of pop out on its own And I'll show you what I mean You just so pull this panel off and uh, it's gonna have wires attached to it. So don't don't rip it too hard uh, See this this just pops off 
but right here is a connector you need to disconnect. Uh, just push the button on the side and pull it out. This one is actually hard to pull out for me, hopefully not for you, but it does come out. We'll put the panel somewhere safe. You'd be surprised if you put it on the ground, weird stuff happens, they get stepped on and broke. So put it somewhere safe. Here's the door lock actuator connector. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect this. Uh, there's a button right here, or a little tab. You push down and you pull this out. Okay, so we got a, a red wire and a black wire on the top. Those are your power and ground for the door lock actuator. So what we wanna do is test it. I, I'm gonna connect this switch back up. I, uh, I tapped into the red wire, but you could just put your, your meter in right from the front, right where the, the, the connector spot is. And then I have this on the ground right here. I took the panel off on the floor and I'm tapped into the ground, but you could just put your meter right there. You don't have to tap into the wires. Just make sure you have a solid posit or wire, I mean ground and connection. So as I push the button, you can see the voltage go, go there. Um, it's saying 8 volts, but it should be 13. But uh, it's probably because my wires are moving around. But you're just checking basically for at least uh, at least you know 8 to 13 volts. There it goes. All right, see 13, and that's when I'm pressing the button. All right, so yeah, that tells me my switch is good. I got power, and uh, now let's check the ground. Basically, hooked to the black wire. Uh, I'm tapped into the black wire, and then I kept my ground on my same spot and uh, basically this should say like 0.03 or 4 that just means the ground is good uh, a little bit of resistance like that is normal that's what it's supposed to have if it was like you know like 3 volts or something then that would be a ground issue but anyway so I know my actuator is bad I'm gonna get it out pull this plastic off uh, this try not to rip the plastic too much try to pull it off right where the glue is this is just for like sound I believe it just keeps like the mechanisms from being too noisy when you're in the car all right, so um, <clears throat> I'm going to take this 10 millimeter bolt out. This is the window track. Go ahead and get that. Pull it out. And uh, just pull the uh, rubber out of it and then just pull this guy out. You're going to need this guy out of your way when you pull the actuator out. We'll put it back in afterwards. So uh, you can see, see that rod with the yellow connector on top? That needs to come off. That yellow connector, do not break it. It's so it's really uh, kind of uh, what's the word like fragile or uh, it could break really easy. So get yourself a flathead and just kind of go to the bottom part of it and pull it loose or push it up. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like there. It's supposed to look like that. You just knock it up. Uh, again, do not break that. And uh, we'll go ahead and get these out. These are uh, Torx. It's a uh, Torx T30. So we'll go ahead and get these out. I went ahead and pulled them out. Okay. Now you should be able to move this around a little bit. Um, I'm gonna have to pull that, that rod out of the uh, handle there. So just pull it out. It might give you a little resistance, but just pull it out. Okay, now you still might not be able to pull this out and basically if you can see that rod in the back, that's coming from the door lock, like where the key goes into. I'll put an arrow on it. It's back there. Uh, we got to move the lock. We got to loosen the lock so that rod will come out. I'm going to move this rubber to the side. All right. Go ahead and pull that out. Okay. So basically what I like to do is I like to immediately take these off and put them on the new one. So just put, pop this out and then pull this guy out. Okay. And then with this blue one, you pop this tab open with a flathead. And uh, once you open that, you just pull that guy out. Just go ahead and pull him up. Not a big deal. Now I'm going to get my new one and immediately switch everything over. I can pull this pull this guy out too. I'm gonna need to switch this rod over as well. This rod is to the outside handle. Okay, I got my new door lock actuator, a pricey little bugger. Put my rod in, just like that. This is where that 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 lock rod was going into. It goes in, and uh, 
yeah it, it turns that so I'll, I'll just hold on a minute and I'll show you how to do that when we put it back in okay so let's get these guys back in where they go this guy went right here make sure he's in good and then put this clip back on okay now we get this guy button just put that little cylinder thing in and then make sure it's clipped in it's important they get clipped in hold them in place okay so now we're gonna put it back in the door um, I'm kind of not gonna be able to show you how to put it back in the door because I got to use both my hands but basically just put it in the way it came out uh, you will have to loosen the lock on the outside I'll show you how to do that so just hang tight and uh, for this spot right there that gray spot but yeah just put it in uh, exactly how it came out okay so that rod back there is what uh, we got to loosen up so there's a little black thing here pop it out and then there's a Torx you see I loosen that Torx and uh, this can move now you loosen the Torx and it won't this bolt won't fall it'll just stay loose okay so let's get this guy in first I recommend put your door lock actuator in the door and put this guy in first make sure that rubber stays out your way it the rubber piece for the window it, it goes like right next to the door lock actuator so you might have to kind of move it around to see how it goes in here's the track for it uh, before you put the track in it might help to put the door lock actuator uh, uh, the bolts in just so you know where the window window part is gonna run it runs kind of like right next to the door lock actuator okay so get this guy in run this guy right here and then um, we'll go ahead and put the track on the rubber make sure the hole lines up right here and get this uh, bolt in very important that gets done okay guys so now let's connect this and uh, before we put the door panel back on let's just do a quick test to make sure everything's working how it's supposed to I connected this again and I'm going to uh, test the uh, door like actuator I'm going to close the door turn my key on and uh, we're going to make sure that this moves get my, my switch panel plug my switch panel back in okay now it's moving so with the key in the ignition it'll just do that it'll just go back and forth it won't actually lock if you take the key out of the ignition it'll lock uh, but that's good and I'm going to make sure my window is, is fine I'm going to make sure that nothing is obstructing the path you know just make sure everything's good do the window slow in case we have something crooked or the window track got put in crooked just kind of just go start slow and then okay if it's good we'll put everything back together put the plastic back on we'll connect our connectors back to the panel put this guy in. when you put this guy in it has these little notches plastic notches that you'll literally just put this slide it in and then the notches will lock in place but be careful not to wear the notches out and uh, also put the um, make sure your white uh, little things aren't in the door like see this one got left in the door take this out first before you put your door back on and put it back on the panel uh, if you don't then your door panel will be loose these go in this little track right here so put those in there yeah it's important those get put in okay so I put my panel back on it just kind of pushes on line up your little white clips and push them in the holes then you could connect this when we put this back in you nose dive it like this to, to watch out for the tab put, put the tab part in first and then just gently uh, line the holes up and push this down into place remember uh, wiggle and gently anything with plastic you always be real patient and wiggle it and gen gently put it in place we'll put my screws back in the long screws go in the handle after I got those in I'm gonna put this back in place again be patient make sure you get it right uh, just line it up perfect and then gently push it in place after it's pretty much lined up and in you could kind of give it like a tap to get it in but with this plastic stuff we got to be real careful Okay, put this screw in, and then this piece goes back in. Um, yep, just put it in. It kind of slides in, and then you start on that side and push it, push it on the back side near the lock. And uh, all right, we'll put our cover back on up here. It just pushes in place, and uh, that's it, guys. So hopefully this video helped you out. Keep watching for a few minutes. I'm gonna show you something with these door lock actuators. To maybe you can just fix them instead of replace them. Okay, so mine are working. That's how they're supposed to work. All right, very good. Both sides are working. Uh, this this problem is fixed. 
So I opened up a door lock actuator and it looks like the only moving part really is this little motor right here. I think I saw a video where people replace this. I don't have any information on this, but here is the part number if you want to try this. Taking the door lock actuator part was a little hard, but uh, you know, just a little extra info. All right, thanks for watching. See you next video. Please subscribe.